Tabletopped is brought to you by the following sponsor. Are you looking for something comfortable to wear and keep your brain warm while playing tabletop games? Daily Dose of Yarn makes handmade, customized beanies for all of your style and comfort needs. She can even help you with a custom beanie to represent your favorite character. Check out Daily Dose of Yarn on Instagram and Etsy to order your new favorite beanie today. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Tabletops. Today, we are going to be talking about another monster from under the bed. This Ooh. one, it's big, it's bad, it disappears, it has claws the size of a young child. It's the Bone Claw. <laughs> when, you, when you say it like that, it sounds kind of like a, like a professional wrestler, though. <laughs> it's, a, yeah. it's a special move that uh, Bone Claw does. I feel like there should be a guitar in the background or something. <laughs> Just a wailing, <laughs> woo Yeah, no, I think that if I ever if I ever deign to join the uh, you know WWE or some sort of wrestling circuit, I will be the Bone Claw. <laughs> Tell me to be a, a tag team duo. I'll be the Bone Maw. Yeah, and, like, and have Greg, a giant mouth. And Greg, uh, <laughs> Greg can be uh, the Bone Collector, and he'll be sort of the you know the Undertaker, the er- Paul Bearer. He'll oh, be yeah, our Paul yeah, Bearer. Yeah, the, yeah. Oh yeah, no, no, I'm definitely for that. <laughs> um, speaking of, you're hearing some new voices. Uh, why don't you guys introduce yourself? to the tabletop audience. Oh, hello. Uh, so my name is Greg, um, and uh, I am just, uh, I guess, another D&D nerd who's uh, been branching off into a few other things. Um, it's namely, uh, I guess it's trying to go into Monster of the Week. Um, what do we? What's the game? What's the game we're playing? <laughs> I have no. Great start. Uh, Great it, start. Uh, noble audience. He is talking about the um, uh, Urban Shadows campaign. Urban <laughs> Shadows. That's what it is. I knew this. This, this is a great start. Um, so yeah. Suffice to say, uh, mostly most of my D and most of my role playing experience is uh, Dungeons Dragons Five E. Um, but. Um, these folks have been nice enough to help, uh, you know, branch out into other aspects of nerdum, and uh, it's exciting to be here. Yeah, great. And uh, who are you, other side of table? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, my name's Sean. I just uh, am a fellow D and D nerd. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. Uh, what, are we looking for my, my bona fides for being on I here? I mean, or just, honestly, I, none of us have real bona yeah, fides. Yeah, no, I... Wait, I, I had to do, like, the whole credentials? Oh, uh, no, 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 just, no, no, uh, no, no, no. I fail. <laughs> fail at podcasting. No, I just... Uh, I, I love to play. I love to uh, to dabble in the uh, the GM sometimes. Uh, I would like to run a Monster of the Week at some point. I just haven't had the chance. Yeah, and, so uh, good. So but good. The, uh, the Urban Shadows uh, is, is a lot of fun. It uh, is a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah, just part of the, part of the old uh, big D&D group yep. experience. Yeah. So today, guys, uh, I I asked, what kind of horrible monsters do you guys want to talk about? And Sean, you were like, what about this bone monster I know of called the Bone Claw? Yeah. Give give us a little bit of a rundown. What is it? So the the Bone Claw is um, a horrible uh, failed experiment in... uh, well, so if you if you want to be a lich really bad, but (laughs) you're no good at trying to be a lich, you... uh, you you mess up and instead of uh, getting your phylactery right, uh, you die and become a, a a basically immortal skeleton creature with giant long uh, like three foot long hand uh, like appendages and claws at the end of your. Uh, arms. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking I'm looking at the picture now and there is like a solid three or four knuckles <laughs> on, oh, on yeah. these fingers. And, oh man, I gotta see this thing. What's it look uh, like? And then you've got. Uh, <clears throat> In, 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 in essence, oh the, my uh, God. because you were evil trying to become a lich, uh, but you weren't smart enough or you messed up, the uh, your your essence basically is trapped in a flactory that gets given to somebody else who is evil and maybe more capable than you. And then can, can and then they control, control you. you. <laughs> so you basically just resigned yourself to be a creature that somebody else controls for their own evil purposes. And it's a great... 
it's a fun monster because uh well we we can get into that well, yeah, yeah like bone claws kind of feel like the nat one role of like a, <laughs> of the necromancer class yeah yeah <laughs> yeah uh, when, when you're level 10 but you really want to be a lich and you should not yeah it's like what God, just give it some time <laughs> yeah so you want to do something so let me get this straight to recap because i know nothing about this you want to be you want to do a horrible thing as it is and become like this undead immortal sorcerer uh you drop the goddamn ball and you turn into that like it's it's a garbage fire on top of a garbage fire yeah, is what you're saying. Yeah, so totally. every everybody knows about, you know, the liches, you know, there are these necromancers that uh, sought power and immortality and so they turn themselves into an undead nightmare. Yep. That uh, and their their soul and their essence is trapped in a uh, uh, in a vessel somewhere and the only way to actually kill them is to destroy that vessel. Well, uh, uh, a bone claw messed up and his his <laughs> phylactery is sent to somebody else uh <laughs> to, to, to be fair um dear audience i just uh, would love to give you some context of why i'm sort of giggling to myself um sean plays a necromancer who, <laughs> who has like low-key tried to do lit shit like several times it's gonna campaign. happen <laughs> yeah it's, it's gonna just, happen it's, it's just when is it gonna happen exactly that's <laughs> not levias is a good person he's a kind human he's being. the most scottish person we know <laughs> yeah i mean he's probably the nicest person of that group which is really saying something. When, they when are, the necromancer is the nicest person. Yeah, we're in the, party. the way that we are not good people. I'm <laughs> I'm trying to be a kingpin in we're, this episode. We're just very mercenary in that group. <laughs> <laughs> very much so. Uh, oh yeah. But, so, but I I um I was I was discussing uh this with my fiance earlier today, and uh, mm-hmm. she was like, "Well, wait. So, so you try to become this creature or this this lich, and instead you're you're you're." you're you suddenly belong to some random person with with like a hate filled heart within like a ten mile radius or something. And uh, what does that does the person know about? Do they like wake up do in the they morning? Know? <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, what the fuck is this weird jar in my room? What is this glowing red com- jar? What is oh, I just had like the honey. Will- did you put this on my nightstand? Harold, no, shut up, Harold, don't wake me up. It's just like. Oh and my then God. suddenly it, <clears throat> you just make better, a, like better. an off-the-cuff wish one day, like, ah, oh, I, I hate this guy. I wish somebody would just go over there and like just kill that rival merchant, and then he winds up dead, and <laughs> you're like, wait a minute, and you just gradually realize you've got a creature? Or do you just like, are you connected to this thing I don't know, automatically? I feel, I feel like that would be an awesome way to use it as a, either as a way for your characters, like maybe you have somebody who wants to play somebody who has like a dark side or whatever and you just say like his like starting thing that you start with you know how you can roll on that table and it gives you like a random talisman yeah it can be like one of the shit and then like <laughs> just totally randomly as the dm you're like yeah you the person that shopkeeper that you hate has just been ripped apart <laughs> by by huge blades <laughs> yeah i mean speaking of the uh, the the claws themselves they like do a uh a, a, this cool grapple move and uh, should we get into the abilities, or should yeah, we just... let's do it. So yeah, let's, let's, let's go this. into some of the abilities, and I'm... then we'll talk about how one would use this either narratively or mechanically in a campaign or one shot or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, just really going through this real quick. Uh, this thing is a large undead, chaotic evil. It has a, a armor class of sixteen, so not something crazy unhittable. But you know, one hundred fifty hit points. This thing's gonna stay up for a little while. Yep. Um, yeah, but I think that the things that really make this thing a nightmare is like its special abilities down here are fucking nuts <laughs> yeah yeah what he's doing well i mean aside from the multi-attack uh with his his big his big claws which do you know like 3d 10 plus 4 damage uh uh oh, yeah plus that's, plus that's two, plus 2d 10, 2D 10 uh, necrotic oh god uh, but they um as a bonus action they've got this thing where they can teleport mm-hmm. well they, they can hide and in and, and shadows and dim darkness and then they can teleport to another person who within shadows and dim darkness, grab them <laughs> and then take them to a different spot away from the party and just rip into them. It, it's like truly the um, the the monster in the movies that like the team is like walking and then like out of the shadows, it like reaches out and grabs you and pulls you into the shadows. It's so good. It's great. <laughs> you know, I'm and, fine. 
Oh my god, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm getting a picture of this for the first time. This thing looks so angry. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's, so it's so mean. I, Why is it so mean? It just it looks like it has this expression that it looks like it wants to run up to the first thing it sees and kills it. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, that's wonderful. I mean, it's also like terrifying because it has like automatic hide in dark darkness, so it's just like very hard to to track. And then also it has a deadly reach ability that if something enters its basically its kill box, <laughs> it's able to basically grab you and you know, do a little uh, top damage before you really start rumbling with it. So it's, you know, it's a nightmare, but it's fun. <laughs> yeah, that seems fun if you're a yeah, DM. He's, yeah, well, they're they're really fun to uh, to use in a uh, in a and again because they're not uh, a good final boss because there's something controlling it, but they're yeah. a great like uh, like level cap boss. Like you're, you know, right before you uh, milestone, like a milestone yeah. boss. Like and a mini when boss, you find, yeah. like an a elite, boss where you an find elite out, mook, right? Yeah, an elite mook, and you find out <laughs> that there's something darker uh, behind the scenes. Like you go to this place and you you think there's this thing, and you ah we killed the thing, and you find out uh, some evidence that there's something more sinister behind everything, mm-hmm. and uh, and it can it can just further your campaign and the story in a way that you want. Uh, and it's also great because no matter uh, how many times you kill the bone claw, until you kill and take care of the person who's destroying it. Or there's the option, it gives you the option of turning that person uh, into a creature of goodness and then the bone claw will die, which is not a lot of oh. other monsters Ooh, give you that I option. I love that. I love but if you that. But if you can convince the person controlling the bone claw to be a good, a good human or uh, elf or whatever, uh, then, then uh, the bone claw will disappear. But otherwise, you have to, uh, you just basically have to get rid of this guy and then the bone claw will stop regenerating uh, back to full hit points and health uh, every, like, 1d10 hours. I've been, in some of the other episodes uh, that are going to come out soon and some that we've already talked about, we've talked about, like, violence in storytelling a little bit. And I love that built into this monster is a moral choice of uh, the easy way probably is going to be killing this nightmare evil person. Yeah, But there is the option that if you can figure out how to do it you can sway this person to like the good side or whatever whatever that means in this campaign yeah just get a um, bard in your party uh <laughs> yeah, inspiring then, words inspiring yeah words. just uh make him fall in love with you yeah and, hype man him. yeah I, like so many things uh but <laughs> maybe a therapist I don't know. yeah <laughs> like, just, why are you so angry you're just playing a roving is, band of therapists your... <laughs> <laughs> tell me about your problems why the, this this uh, monster that is like disemboweling people that's it's like let's let's talk about this and then several ther- therapy therapy sessions later <laughs> just Ooh. put down the shining red jar let's talk about this <laughs> yeah uh, uh, but it is it is it is fun to have the bone claw pop up later because it's like in a video game when you you beat the uh, you know the first big boss and then he, they pop up later but you're like oh we've done this before so he's just like a a recurring character yeah. that you can knock off for XP. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's just a nice throwback monster, too. Yeah, I think that what I love about this monster is that it's a real good atmosphere setter because you are endangering the environment around the characters by saying, hey, there's pools of darkness that are spilling out from different rooms. And like you look around a corner and you can't see the end of it if this monster is like in the characters minds mechanically they're thinking oh fuck <laughs> this yeah. thing can jump out literally from anywhere yeah. and then as a, as like the the role playing aspect is just like this gives a lot of fear to like there is something in the darkness it's that classic like um primordial fear of yeah it's the the monster yeah. you know it's stalking you and it's yes. yeah uh, this is when you don't want to trigger happy sorcerer who's like throwing fireballs every willy nilly <laughs> like where are you and just like oh well Gary's dead Thanks, yeah man. good luck finding a sorcerer who's not triggered <laughs> uh, well you know they're out there somewhere is there such thing as a non wild magic sorcerer <laughs> I mean I've yet to meet one I've heard rumors <laughs> yeah I, th- I think that like this is obviously a really great horror themed monster as well that would fit into any like horror campaign um, but have you guys ever heard of it? Or I guess, Sean, Mrs. Greg, you've never heard of this thing before. <laughs> nope. Like, Sean, have you ever either experienced it um, done in a more, like, action sequency way or in a, a way that kind of bends the genre away from horror and into, like, something else? No, I think it's it's really, it's designed for that horror aspect. It's it's really like a creepy, crawly, nightmare creature yeah. uh, that um, is, it's going to stalk you, it's going to hop out of the shadows, and it's going to keep coming back until you find a way to get rid of it. It's like a... 
uh, a, a different type of Jason Voorhees or, or uh, yeah. a Freddy Krueger type. Uh, it does feel yeah. kind of like a classic slasher yeah. villain, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, especially if it keeps coming back. You yeah. know? It's like in Friday the 13th Part 2 or 13. I, how many are there? Friday right the 13th now? Part 13. <laughs> yeah, uh, 13. No, have we gotten there yet? Maybe, probably. they know. got to do something they, for they that movie, have, right? right? That, that has, Jason, wasn't yeah. Jason X in space? They That was... That was So Jason X, but I don't think that that was the 10th one. I think it was just Jason, like, no, Chrome. That had was to that be just Jason to be, X. like, cool because X's are cool or something? I don't, I don't know. It was, know. A, it was, it it was definitely called Jason X, but I don't think it was, like, the Roman numeral. Oh, uh, uh, to see maybe that one. Was, I don't know. maybe like <laughs> greg list every jason movie oh, you can you're a friday uh, the 13th oh. fan list, list every jason movie i don't even know anything about him i think he has a hockey mask <laughs> yeah. no i think that um yeah it's like a really great slasher thing it also um we'll talk about this more in the horror podcast but there i feel very strongly that the thing that is scary is not the thing that you are able to either reason with or the thing that you are able to kill and having this thing, the knowledge that it will always come back. Yeah. There, There's no real ending this threat. Yeah. And that's you like you... until the end. Right. Right. Um, and yeah. so it just is looming. And I feel like that is what this monster really provides is a way for danger to loom in the background. What, yeah. Yeah. What I really like about it in that way, it's like, you're, you're not so much as killing the monster. You're delaying it. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just <laughs> you are a mild inconvenience to this mindless creature, <laughs> pretty yeah. much. And then yeah. one day, it's and I love about it because it's like even when you're like a really powerful character, maybe one day you're down low HP and you're separated, and it might take its opportunity. Yeah, oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, he's a he's a fun uh, fun monster to throw into a, a campaign and like to just to give you clues and evidence that there's you know like I said before something behind the curtain that you maybe didn't know about. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and if a book falls off the shelf or something, you know, <laughs> yeah. opens to the right page yeah. and you're like, oh, it was old man Henry the whole time. Yeah, I love a monster man, that implies Henry. the existence of another monster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for walking us through that monster, Sean. Yeah, anytime. He's one of my one of my favorites. Yeah, I think Greg, uh, how do you feel about the Bone Claw? <laughs> I mean, I like it. This sounds like a lot of fun. I just don't want it thrown at me because uh, it sounds terrifying. Well, yeah, I kind of do. I, I, you know, horror. I, I, I'm a masochist. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I will also say because this is I've I've experienced this monster before, but also it's my first time really like deep diving into it. This is like a perfect monster of the week monster as well, just yeah. to yeah. like take the fundamentals and just throw and just, it into another absolutely. system. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. It it, it's bones. They're real good. <laughs> yeah, There's no bones about it. Yeah. No, no bones, no bones about, about it. No bones about it. We did it. <laughs> All right. On that note, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we can't get any better than that. Yeah, no, we, we've no. peaked at uh, bones about it. All right. See ya. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.